uh, just in case uh, we do go with uh, a Google Lit Trip like activity for our project based learning activity, activity, I thought maybe I'd show you a little bit about uh, some of the tools that we could use in Google Earth. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of Google Earth. I'm up for any kind of project, though, that is engaging and uh, successfully integrates uh, all the subjects like we want it to. Um, when we did Google, a sort of Google Lit Trip like activity last year, it was pretty simplified. Um, they start out with a title page, and here they have obviously the title of the book. This could be more dramatic. <coughs> we could add more links in here. We could, I think we could. Um, I'm not sure we could embed the video here, but we certainly, we, we might be able to, just haven't tried. We can link out to a Google site page with a embedded link with an introduction that they make. And maybe some probing questions like, uh, how does geography affect your life? Or Mark had another one too that I thought was really good. Can't remember it right offhand. But as you go through the book, if you're reading the fictional text, you study the non-fiction elements in the text. So. Um, these are very popular in that what the SPAC's having us do a lot of is compare fictional text with non-fictional text. So they're actually writing non-fiction text along with the fictional text. So we did it quite simply. We didn't ask any essential questions to be answered, but we could uh, probe this with how does your environment or geography affect the way you live and t tie that into the, the buildings here and how does it affect your life? What benefits does it provide? What was the motivation? What did, how do they want this to change your life by having this built? Um, getting the science of how this was built and the writing there that they did. Here you can see the, the bookmark that they put. Here's the place mark they use to co cover the book. And once here you get actually get a view of what's happening in the story. You can compare the uh, Wool Woolworth building. This is the One World Trade Center. I think it's the second largest building in the world right now in the background. Um, and then they move on to the Flatiron building. That was the next thing. I clicked the wrong thing. So um, we talk about comparing it. So we'll skip the flat iron and uh, compare it to the smokestacks here. And when you click here, they um, they do a little. In my class, they just wrote about the smokestacks and mentioned it. We could actually demonstrate the the difference in um, information here and how how that this uh, geography affects our environment. And a lot of controversy about the smokestacks right now. Um, and then we get brought to, uh, they head on to Kathmandu. And here we got links to, to religion and all along answering the question, how does your geography affect the way you live? You know, if you live in a society where it's taken over by a country that doesn't allow freedom of religion, then it does quite a bit. Um, where you live can make a huge difference, whether you're in China or, um, or Nepal. Uh, okay, here's the North Base Camp. Um, we could get into, you know, the altitude. Um, they climb up. We could have a link to talking about getting uh, the altitude sickness and the science about that. Um, teaching kids as they read the story um, the effect that your altitude has on your living. Geography affect how you live. Um, Mount Everest was, was my final. And... Um, so we could do further, really get more in depth about Mount Everest and uh, maybe the reasons why, the land formations, the different faults. We could have additional links to this here um, to information that they studied about it. So um, I think there's potential. I'm up for doing uh, just about anything, but just thought I'd share so you kind of get a, s a glimpse of what you can do. And the kids basically are creating these tags, creating these place marks, and then doing a little HTML editing inside. Not, not really complicated stuff, but the HTML, you can kind of see it in here. They have HR to draw the lines, and then font size equals plus three. They could change the color, add links, add images, link out to a Google site page and whatnot. Change the altitude, the view of how we're looking at it. Um, but I think just I think there's a lot of science in here. I think there's a lot of probing questions that could be offered, and then I think our overall goal would be to supply to our cli clients um, curriculum material that links nonfiction information with fictional text. Which is this site is sponsored by Google. Um, this was started by Jerome Berg, and Jerome Berg is now an employee of Google and promotes this um, with Go as a Google-sponsored activity. And we would be possibly <coughs> having selecting 
some to actually submit to Google for consideration to be included on this site. And currently Peak is not included here. Uh, we could also use these as samples, maybe take a, a easy reading book, uh, one that we can get through pretty quickly and then view the, the Google Lit Trip for that book on it. They have Bud Not Buddy here and the Great Horn Spoon. We probably don't have time to get through that. Um, but obviously they have, as, they, as you go down, um, they have children's books and Google Lit Trips that go along with those books. So um, I think it would be fun to actually try to submit one. Um, I don't know 100% sure, but if you submit, I hear they always give you an answer and they'll give you a, a score and, and give you an explanation of why or why not your 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 prod, your Google Lit Trip would be submitted or not. So that might be kind of fun for our kids. I think, you know, Google's been doing this and, and sponsoring it, and they're kind of a big deal in education right now. And um, it'd be kind of fun to to connect with them and have Google as our client. So um, just some things to think about. Um, that's all.